60 Minutes, Rewind. Tomorrow night, a stellar event on stage at the Metropolitan Opera here in New York. A celebration of a quarter century of performance at the Met by the world's two most celebrated tenors, Luciano Pavarotti and Placido Domingo. We spent a few days this past summer with one of them, the one they've been whispering about in the opera world, that the twilight of this superstar's career is now upon him. Too fat, the story goes. His voice has begun to crack. He can't deliver an operatic performance the way he used to. Well, take a look at the Luciano Pavarotti we saw this summer at his beach house in Italy. So this is the famous Pavarotti beach house, the, where you relax, where you lose weight, where you get back your health. Yeah, generally it is like that. And this year is more than always. This is my sister. These are my relatives. And it is my wife. <laughs> oh, look. This is her exercise. Yeah. That, that man with the teeth out is my father. <laughs> he's 80 years old. He he's, looks good. He's 81 in November. How bad is the pressure? Truthfully. Truthfully. Truthful? Yeah. I think he's an enjoyment. I don't think he's a job. He's not a profession. He's an enjoyment. I'm telling you the truth. I believe. Other way, I will not do now at my age when everybody is trying to kill me. Every newspaper is there ready to say when I'm going to die and I do that. And in fact, it's headline news when Pavarotti does almost anything. If he, for instance, in London misses a performance or sings a false note, his megastar status gets full frontal attack. But mostly in recent years, it is his girth, his weight, that has been the subject of speculation. In fact, Luciano can be most diplomatically described as portly. And for a man who was trouble fitting comfortably into an airline seat, his schedule is a backbreaker. He spends 10 months of each year on the road, travels the opera houses of the world, plus mega concerts in stadiums, a circuit that would exhaust any other artist, and his schedule is full until 1996. You know, you are quoted as acknowledging that you are indeed sometimes afraid when you sing. Confronted with singing of high seas, in a single aria from Donizetti's Daughter of the Regiment. I was so scared, this is you talking. I was so scared I didn't know which muscle to use most, the throat or the sphincter. The throat or what? The sphincter. The sphintere? Uh, yeah, yes. Oh, I see. The sphincter. You are scared. If you do something wrong, they, they, they can protest, they can boo you. You are not hurt truly now about the speculation, oh, he's entering the twilight of his career and, and he's, he's lazy, I hear that a lot. You want to know something, I am lazy. You are? Yes. And it turns out that laziness is one reason for his weight problem. His breath is affected by his weight and breathing is the key to singing. What is with your weight problem? Well, the weight problem of a person like me has just one answer, eat. There is no other, other dysfunction or nervous, no, eat. I like to eat and I do. They told you that I like horses. I am almost an horse. That's right. Very good, here we are. That's, That's it. Is, That's your salad. But this is for 15 people. Of course I will have a big plate of that. Look. So you're down to how it much? It was tight, this. <laughs> I really was. You won't tell me how much you weigh now. Yes, how much? I'll tell you. How much? 29 kilo less. <laughs> At this luncheon al fresco with his extended family, he eats and drinks modestly. He's on a 2,000 calorie daily ration. As we watched, he pushed some of his own pasta onto the plate of a friend. And then to show just how seriously he takes his diet, he blotted up the olive oil with his napkin. Luciano's alleged 300 pound plus weight has always put extra pressure on his right knee, the one that was operated on last March. It has made some operatic parts difficult and painful for him. But the vacation and his new weight loss have quite obviously made him more agile. Don't try to drive, stay. <laughs> He's like a boy on his moped and his bike and his, I mean, he's like a kid. Yeah, he's a kid. 
They've been married for 32 years. So wife Adjua has learned to tolerate Luciano's eccentricities. If you, if you, if you see the baby like that, the little boy, yes. it's the same. <laughs> What's that all about? He's impatient. He's impatient? Impatient, yes. Cannot, uh, cannot stay concentrated more than uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Except when he's singing. Yeah. If he quits, when he quits, what will he do? Quit. Stops. But he loves uh, um, to teach. The story will continue after this. From the beginning. Lord Golfo, no. Lord Golfo, to hotum de la chita. Lord go. Okay. Lord. I am here. Okay. Kiwe Wang is an American from New Jersey. He was understandably flattered that Pavarotti invited him to come to the beach house for a little coaching. To meet his global engagements, Luciano flies nearly everywhere by private jet, but he's terrified of flying. Each flight reminds him of a narrow escape and a crash landing back in 1975 at Milan Airport. His secretary and artistic advisor, Judy Kovacs, gives him support on this approach to Marseille. Luciano descends from the skies like a nobleman to be greeted by French officials, the media, and beautiful women. One member of your retinue who, is, who travels with you and know, he says that women are not the least bit turned off by your bulk, your chubbiness. Here's what he says. Pavarotti receives as many sexual offers as a rock star. I am sorry for the rock star then. <laughs> you mean there aren't that many? Not, not really, no. No, not really. You're an industry now, aren't you? I'm what? An industry. Your voice, your concerts, your fame, your name, your horse shows, your records, your wife's talent agency, your real estate holdings. It's gigantic. The Pavarotti empire. I don't think it's an empire. You know very well that people in the entertainment, they gain a lot and they spend a lot. Yeah. Most of my colleagues in the past, they finish in misery. Because they spend too much? Because they spend everything. Make and spend. Even more. What it's very good. Is... Don't, don't misunderstand. Oh. I, was, I, was an, uh, I was an elementary school teacher who gained $5 a month. So for me, everything was coming. It was good. You don't become a multimillionaire. You don't. You really don't. No, don't, don't investigate me like that. <laughs> you don't. You're, you're serious? Believe, believe me. Yeah, I'm very serious. 